searching for something. Excavating a person I've long tried to bury. It is almost grossly medical. Yeah. Attached lens hanging from a high point as I picture myself lying on the table. Laid out in sin for a body made for me. Dangerously playing out oh, yeah. to God. And to strip a body of sin stem to stern is to save this life. told me that I was a really happy kid and I think just growing up growing pains are a part of that process and I really felt that starting the eighth grade mental health in my family wasn't really talked about and so I didn't have the vocabulary to both understand and articulate what I was feeling and ultimately I felt a lot of shame and discomfort in revealing how I felt. I think the language and how we approach mental health means everything. The words I heard growing up were, be grateful, don't come back until you stop crying, do something productive with your emotions. As a kid, I internalized it but didn't really understand how that would impact me growing up and I was desperate to fix something internal with external changes like haircuts and doodling on my arm with pen. My parents just wanted me to survive in this world and they truly do center love and care in everything they do but the impact was translating softness as weakness and being ungrateful for everything that they had worked hard to provide for me. And as a kid, I, I really internalized the hell out of that. And even now, as I am unlearning and learning, I still feel a great discomfort in vocalizing how I feel and asking for support without feeling like a burden or that I'm being ungrateful. Something that I haven't shared publicly and still really hesitate doing now is that I did struggle with self-harm. It's not something that defines me, but it is a big part of my story and forever will be. It's a part of me that I have held and in some ways still do hold shame and guilt over because it was an experience that wasn't just me, but it impacted everyone around me. My physical body was reflecting exactly how I saw myself internally. I think high school is just a really hard transition period and I really struggled with believing that I was a good person who deserved good things and that I deserved to be loved and cared for and to be a part of life itself. I can't imagine what it is to be a parent and find out that your child is doing something unimaginable and you know my parents reacted in anger and that that only made me suppress sharing how I was feeling even more now looking back 
I know that all of their projections did come from love and protection that they didn't know how to extend except through anger and confusion. It's a really hard chapter of my life, but I think it taught me a lot about compassion and how important it is to show up for one another when it isn't easy or when we don't or can't ever understand. Ultimately, I realized that nothing was going to change unless I did the inner work. I think this is definitely putting everything I've been you know, talking about and working on into practice. And yeah, I think this is a great, great step in the right direction. had my first ever therapy session yesterday and because I didn't you know get to record it I kind of wanted to do some reflection on it I think one of the most special parts about you know being able to go to therapy for the first time and holding that care for myself was seeing how many other people resonated with my experience and just a simple sharing of you know, what the process is like to sign up and, you know, sharing my own experience, I found that it really opened up others to, you know, take that leap and feel encouraged to receive support in the same way. I think high school for me was that point when I needed therapy the most, but it's super cool to see how the dialogue around therapy has changed so much. I've talked to college friends now that still hold that internalized stigma that going to therapy means you're weak or you're crazy. And so just seeing the conversation around it with so much love and support really makes me hopeful about all the ways we can support each other moving forward. Doing the inner work did something magical. Instead of trying to change my external context in hopes it would heal something internal, I was beginning to notice a shift. But how I presented and expressed myself on the outside was reflecting who I was becoming on the inside. In December, on a trip to Seattle to visit my sister, I walked into a tattoo shop without an appointment and got my first tattoo. A butterfly on my forearm with the word lover above it. But tattoos also have a complex, stigmatized history within the already deeply diverse API community. In China, there's a phrase, wen shen, which means to puncture the body. Although this practice has existed since the Han Dynasty, tattooing has always had barbaric connotations. Confucianism emphasized the virtue of purity, so tattooing was seen as an undesirable defamation of the body. 
when talking about tattoos with my own parents. Outside of the typical worries you hear about not being able to get a job and not looking professional, they told me they saw tattoos as disrespectful to the body that your parents gave you. The Chinese also use tattoos to mark their criminals, tattooing their faces and exiling them away. But tattoos hold different connotations and histories within the AAPI community, and my singular experience is not representative of its nuanced history. It's beautiful the expansive meaning tattoos have in different cultures. So operating within the context of both beauty and stigma that tattoos hold, what do tattoos mean to me? At first, tattoos were my way of covering up the ways that I had hurt myself, of repairing and hiding. I didn't want the attention or shame I had received and internalized. I wanted to walk through the world again as the happy kid my mom told me I was. <laughs> instead of wanting tattoos to hide who I was, I wanted them to instead reveal the person I was becoming. For me, it was about honoring my story. The ways I had learned to finally take care of myself, to do something for my body that was kind and reflective of the beauty I both saw and finally wanted. In all the ways I am unbecoming, dark elbowed, sun blotched, kissed by metal and wire, I am beauty. Held by my own two hands, the sidewalk bird unmoved by my passing, family born and made. And what defines love more than its persistence when we challenge it? Hideaway, cutthroat, jackrabbit startled, decode an eternal young heart scored by memory and loss. Are you ready for my healing? 